Okay, hello everybody. This is Bob Coppage, CEO of Simplex IT, and I'm joined once again by Adam Evans, the security director. Hey, Adam, it, it's so much fun getting back together with you like this. Yeah, I feel like we just did this like last week or not yeah, long yeah. ago. Yeah, but but no, you come up with yet another. There's another security issue going on, but this one is CVE 2023-20198. Yes, following you know CVE 2023-8675309. <laughs> sadly i almost thought you were serious until but anyway <laughs> so anywho this is uh has just come up recently why don't you give a little lowdown on what's going on yeah so this this vulnerability impacts all cisco ios xc devices that have http server functionality yada 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 can i throw any more letters and numbers into this statement i don't know you had me at ios xc yeah, let's go with that. Um, but specifically, so there's a vulnerability in the operating system that runs on a specific subset of Cisco products, namely some of their Catalyst line, ASR devices, and more. Right. Got a link on the slide here for people to, to validate. And this is particularly bad because malicious entities can jump in, create a new admin user, and then basically gain control over these devices, which is, go figure, it's bad. That's technical, um, but yeah. But but the thing is, is that they all they have to do, if they can reach the device, they can create the admin user, right? Yeah, in a, in a nutshell. Yep. Um, there's, of course, more technical nuance to it, but I think we've already thrown enough letters and numbers and technical stuff in on that one. Agreed. Um, but the concerning thing is um, security researchers have discovered, including Cisco's Talos division, that's kind of their threat intelligence and fancy pants security wizards over there. Um, they found that bad guys are actively using this vulnerability and have been for about a month at this point. Right. But it really um, just it, came to, and, and uh, we're recording this on, I think, the 20th, uh, 23rd of, of October. Yeah. Uh, but it really didn't come out publicly till a few days ago, right? Yeah, about the middle to end of last week. Yep. Okay. So, what, what, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to, to come up with a quick video to let the non- high cyber security flute and folks like you we want everybody else to have an idea of what to do so what should people be doing here so first off obviously validate to make sure your environments if you're exposed or not um feel free to check out that product link on the previous slide but if you are affected by this the simple answer of this and i know we sound like broken records of this one but patch uh cisco released a firmware update uh over the weekend to address this right and it may not go to everybody immediately. So if you don't see it right now, check a little bit later. Yeah, and, and just follow if you have an established, uh, you know, procedures and everything like that for updating your network infrastructure, just follow the procedure, pass to validate and, and patch. Yep. Um, if you do have one of these devices that are impacted, um, it is highly advised that you do look for indicators of compromise of security people we love to call these IOCs. But um, essentially, to go through and look for those those compromises, some it's um, potential bad uh, bad usernames that are malicious in nature may include Cisco TAC admin, Cisco support. Uh, there's a link over here as well detailing all the things you can look for specific you know specific technical things that uh, IT professionals may may want to validate if they're impacted. So these are just a couple of examples because the bad guys they're creating these admin accounts and they may just create them so they can do something later uh but but the idea is they want to create it with a, a name that sounds legit yeah you, you know think through if, if i were a bad guy which which i'm not at least i hope not um but if i were a bad guy i would want to do things to try to hide in an environment um right. use usernames and, and service names that look legitimate so if i'm a defender you know, hopefully the idea is if, if someone's reviewing those usernames they look at it and go oh yeah cisco support sounds about right yeah probably is right yeah, like, oh yeah, it's it, it sounds default enough. It sounds like something that should have been there. Yep. Um, so, but essentially the moral of the story though, is if you do find these accounts or any suspicious indicators of compromise, you're gonna wanna start reviewing for additional indicators. You know, right. e execute your instant response procedures, initiate a threat hunt. If you have third-party partners and firms that do this kind of work, start engaging them to validate that everything is, is fine and dandy, or if, if there's a greater issue going on here. Right, um, because because the bad guys can go ahead and create an admin account, but then once they got that in place, they can do a whole bunch of other stuff. Right. So a, good, a great example of that is you'll hear some security professionals talk time and time again how important it is to do what's called network segmentation and defense in depth. If I were a bad guy and I got access to one of these these appliances, 
this could allow me to make changes to allow ransomware or allow me to move more across the network. Um, right. It really just opens up the door for, for even worse things. It's like if I found an open window in someone's house and I was breaking in, this could allow me to unlock the front door so my buddies can jump in and do all kinds of nasty stuff. Which really gets back to that whole concept of layered security. Yes. You know, because any one layer, none of them are 100 percent and any one mm -hmm. layer can be compromised in this case very, very easily. Yeah. Uh, and if that's the only layer and you were depending upon that one layer working 100 percent, no ifs, ands or buts, eh, you're toast. Exactly. Yeah. If your entire defense strategy relies on network segmentation and you've got one of these devices in play and it's compromised, your defensive strategy is at severe risk. Right. You're um, being kinder than I am. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that that's hard so bottom line is absolutely you want to patch you want to update the firmware so that vulnerability is no longer an issue but you also want to see whether or not that vulnerability was compromised already yes so it's like those two things and and if it looks like the, the vulnerability has already been compromised you have a whole different level of hurt potentially going on and you yep. need to you need to take that and aggressively look after your configuration and logs and all those things to make sure that uh, it it hasn't gone further. Yep, absolutely. Um, in, in short, if if I were looking over our client environments and I found one of these devices, I would then initiate what I would call a threat hunt, go to see if the the threat and vulnerability has been used, all the bad stuff's going on, and start digging in to look for other stuff that's known that that bad actors are known to do. However, were... in our yeah. case, though, you did look over our, and, and we just we, we were able to determine that nobody fall on, that falls under that vulnerability, right? Yep. And this, this, is, this really highlights the importance of having a good asset inventory and asset inventory systems. Uh, this allowed me to rapidly go through our client environments, validate whether any of the affected products were in place, and determine that we didn't have any. Um, the devices that are affected are more enterprise class, which is why it looks really bad in the news headlines. But your small, medium businesses probably aren't using those. Right. But double check anyway. Yep. Which is why we put this this quick video together. Yep. And we've been seeing, you know, or at least I've been seeing the chatter over the weekend and whatnot from security professionals talking about this vulnerability. And even some reports that insurance carriers are saying, make sure you've addressed this report, whether you're impacted by it or not. So we wanted to get the material out there. Um, we're seeing the headlines out there. I think Washington Post had a really good article about it as well. Um, but it's, it's the doom and gloom headlines you see of, oh my God, the hackers are doing the hacker things yeah. and whatnot. So, but, Which but is why we clients... do these videos is because there seems to be only two types of communication. One, the 90,000 foot view of the sky is falling, we're all, we're all doomed, like you're saying, doom, doom and gloom. Or stuff that gets so deep into the weeds that the traditional you know management for small medium businesses or even IT management for small medium businesses just doesn't have a clue as to how serious to take this, which is understandable for both parties. Oh, absolutely. That's why yeah. we do yeah. these videos. Yep. So yeah, um, the good news for our client base, yeah, we've not determined any impact here for us and our operations. This was just reinforces our established processes that we've been working towards and, and executing. Cool. Um, so bottom line, as always, what we tell people is you need to make sure someone's paying attention to this. And if this is your current managed service provider, that's great. If this is the current IT, uh, internal IT folks, that's great. If you have concerns, you need to do, know, need to know more of the like. Here's some ways to get a hold of us. Uh, and, you know, we're already emailing clients with this info uh, along with the uh, uh, along with the, the link to the video. So. But let us know and give us some feedback as to whether or not this video is useful because we we want to keep doing more of these so yep and, and hopefully to our, our our conversation earlier at the start of this um this last month has been pretty crazy for all these really nasty vulnerabilities out here um it's not always this crazy but uh, we think it's important to to learn and share um absolutely because as you mentioned bob not everyone has the bandwidth for it and it's fortunate that we're able to to provide the value to who we do it so yay all right, everybody. Thanks. Share this. Give us feedback. Like and support. Yeah, absolutely. Bye, everyone.